Welcome everyone. Uh, as you've already understood, you are about to hear about a very exciting discovery, and maybe even a momentous one. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for attending this conference today. We, my colleagues and I, are here today representing the Pale Red Dot collaboration. This is an international project of 31 scientists from eight countries all around the world who have used two ESO instruments and two other photometric observatories to search for exoplanets around a particular star, our closest neighbor, Proxima Centauri. As I say, it was nothing like uh, what we had seen before. This uh, uh, gas giant was orbiting uh, the star much closer than uh, Mercury does the Sun. But the discovery of more than 3,000 exoplanets to date has revealed the complexity and diversity of exoplanetary systems uh, and how they change over time. We are also starting to characterize their bulk properties and those of their atmospheres, which gets particularly interest, interesting for terrestrial planets in temperate orbits at a distance that allows liquid water on their surfaces, what we call the habitable zone. Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf belonging to the Alpha Centauri stellar group, which includes also two solar-like stars, Alpha Cen A and B. It is a star closest to our, sun, to our solar system at 4.2 light years, but even so it is at around 3,000 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. You will understand the difficulty of detecting this movement, this, this movement if you can imagine the huge sphere of hot plasma that the star is moving just as the speed of a person walking on the street. As an example, Proxima Centauri is just about one-tenth of the mass and radius of our Sun gathering more than 500 data points in three different surveys of Proxima Centauri. Okay, so we have found the terrestrial planet orbiting Proxima Centauri. It's the nearest exoplanet we will ever found because it's the nearest star to the Sun and we are very excited about it. You might... So, we had this pale red dot campaign which kind of have been a specially designed experiment. We had this evidence of the signal around the star in a period around 11 and 20 days. Um, and we used um, the HARPS spectrograph, which is currently the most precise machine. And we can do this on Proxima just because it's the nearest one. And we were getting this continuous monitoring covering at least five cycles of this putative signal. So that was the key of the campaign. So if you have a signal, it will show like here, you have a peak, something that stands up against this noise. And then you have these horizontal lines, which are the detection thresholds. So, at some point, when you accumulate enough data, the signal just goes above these detection thresholds. So, yes, um, the signal has been consistent for the last 16 years. This is a strong, huge statistical evidence. So the temperature that you would have on the surface of this planet if there is no atmosphere is actually minus 40 degrees, which is not spectacular. But, of course, we all want this planet to have an atmosphere, and if it has an atmosphere, it is actually pushing up the temperature through the greenhouse effect above zero degrees and in the liquid water habitable zone. Now, the star has only 20% of the solar mass and it's also much cooler. It's a, a kind of a very different star and that's, uh, that makes the planet fall into the habitable zone. We expect and we completely trust that a planet with a mass of 1.3 Earth masses is a terrestrial planet. It is a general misconception that these M dwarfs are flaring like hell and that you cannot, that nothing can survive in their proximity because they're so active. But it's not like going on like hell up there, most probably. So this is, this is what we know about the star and we can study it in detail. So this does not exclude the existence of an atmosphere and if the planet does have an atmosphere, it would not get blown away or something by today's activity of the star. We have no clue whether this planet has an atmosphere or not, whether it has water or not, but the existence of it is actually plausible. It will be possible in the future to take pictures of this system with technology that is not too far away. It also makes it within reach of space probes. We will hear this later. This is a planet in our neighborhood 
and we will we will start thinking about how we can actually take a picture from somewhere else than on Earth. So maybe finally we send out a camera and actually take a picture, which would be the most spectacular thing I think we, we could uh, think about. Bottom line, that Proxima B is indeed our neighbor, so let us get used to it. <laughs> Yuri Milner and Stephen Hawking announced Breakthrough Starshot. It's a privately funded initiative to begin developing humanity's first probe to another star system. We intend to develop a nanocraft weighing less than one gram attached to a light sail. We will use an extremely powerful laser on the ground to push hundreds of these nanocraft to uh, approximately 20% of the light speed and direct them towards the nearest star system, which includes three stars, Alpha Centauri A and B, and of course Proxima Centauri, a return laser communication signal back to Earth containing images and other data of the planets uh, such as Proxima B orbiting these stars. And we have assembled a team of the world's most knowledgeable experts to assess this question. These experts included scientists working here at the European Southern <coughs> Observatory. With today's announcement, we now know there's at least one planet, uh, the one orbiting Proxima Centauri, that has some characteristics similar to the Earth. Over the next decade, we will work with experts here at ESO and elsewhere to get as much information as possible about the Proxima Centauri planet, perhaps as noted, even including whether it might bear life. Yuri Miller, Stephen Hawking, and Mark Zuckerberg oversee our project. The suggestion of the Proxima Centauri discovery was truly inspirational to them. After our initial research phase, we hoped to build a privately funded prototype system costing between 500 million and 1 billion US dollars. Uh, so we are really excited and to use the US term pumped about this discovery. Uh, we're on our way. And thank, thanks to the team and thanks to the European Southern Observatory. We believe that most likely it is face locked, which means that a day is a year and it's always facing the, the same sign to the star. Ten years ago, it would have been very suspicious to detect this planet. People would not believe in this planet. There were a lot of misconceptions about the end dwarfs being too active and tidal lock doesn't allow life to exist or even an atmosphere. This is not true because people have invested time. So I think it's actually the right time to report this. We are not reporting the first planet. We are not reporting the last planet we find. We are reporting a very special one that it's close to, to the sun. And that's the big news here. Now, with technologies we understand today, it's not possible to send bigger things and certainly not possible to send people. So we, that, that, that may be you know, centuries in the future, if ever, uh, that uh, by maybe 2060 or so, you'll be flying by uh, the Proxima Sen, uh, as well as some of the other nearby stars, and that, that we can get these <coughs> images that, uh, that we hope to see. Uh, is there life there? I mean, even a, a, you know, there could be uh, you know, advanced life, those are, those are some of the great questions I think are going to be answered this century. So we have high expectations that this is actually a multi-planet system, so we keep looking. Could Starshot re-aim to Proxima B, I guess? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> uh, and and the, we are looking probably at having the laser uh, beamer that would be uh, in Chile is the most likely location. Uh, it's only a few degrees the difference between the uh, Alpha Centauri and Proxima Centauri. So from the beginning, we had looked at, uh, at, at sending nanoprobes, hundreds of them, to both star systems. Uh, what this now tells us is that we know there's at least one very interesting target that's within range of, of, of our, uh, our proposed system. What, what the chances of a false positive are? Do you have a number? Statistical false positive is really tiny. It's about one in 10 million, something like this. So, so far, as we know, there is no false positive that can explain this planet or this signal. 